Hello, and welcome back to Biology 101. In this video, we will be talking about the cell cycle. So what exactly is the cell cycle? Well, the cell cycle is a process of organized steps that takes place within a cell, causing it to produce two new daughter cells. This process can be split into two major phases. The first of these phases is known as interphase, during which the cell grows and DNA is replicated. You should note that the cell tends to spend most of its time during the interphase throughout its lifespan. Once certain conditions within the cell are met, which we'll be discussing later in this video, the cell cycle moves on to the mitotic phase where the duplicated DNA and cell contents are divided and the cell ultimately splits itself into two daughter cells. So let's start out by investigating the interphase. Interphase occurs in three stages. The first stage is known as the first gap or the G1 phase. During the G1 phase, the cell accumulates the energy, proteins, RNA, and other building blocks needed for DNA synthesis, which occurs in the next stages. Furthermore, the cell grows larger and duplicates some of its cellular contents and organelles. The second stage is known as the S phase, or what I like to refer to as the synthesis phase. During the synthesis phase, the cell synthesizes a complete copy of its nuclear DNA, resulting in two identical pairs of DNA known as sister chromatids. These sister chromatids are held together by cosine proteins and linked together at a region at the center of the two chromatids called the centromere. Furthermore, during the synthesis phase, a structure known as the centrosome is also duplicated. Each centrosome comprises of two microtubule rings known as centrioles. The two centromeres will be critical in later stages of the cell cycle, especially in the movement of DNA during cell division. Finally, in the G2 phase, the cell makes the final preparations needed before the cell enters the mitotic phase. During the G2 phase, the cell synthesizes more proteins accumulates energy, and dismantles its cytoskeleton to provide resources for the mitotic phase, during which the sister chromatids will be moved around. The cell also continues to grow and duplicate some of its organelles. Now this leads us to the mitotic phase. The mitotic phase is a multi-step process during which the duplicated chromosomes are aligned, separated, and moved into two new identical daughter cells. Mitosis occurs in two stages. Chirokinesis is a stage where the division of the cell nucleus occurs, while the second stage, being cytokinesis, is where the cell itself is divided into two daughter cells. The first and longest step of karyokinesis is known as the prophase. During the prophase, the nuclear envelope, or the membrane of the nucleus, and other membranous organelles, such as the Golgi apparatus, are broken down. Furthermore, the sister chromatids condense and coil into denser structures known as chromosomes, which become fully visible under a microscope. The centromeres also move to opposite poles of the cell, forming a microtubule structure known as the mitotic spindle. After the prophase, we have the prometaphase. During the prometaphase, the chromosomes continue to condense, the mitotic spindle continues to stretch across the nucleus as the centromeres continue to move apart. Protein structures, known as kinetochores, form in the centromeres of the chromosomes and function by attaching the chromosomes to the microtubules of the mitotic spindle. The third step of karyokinesis is known as the metaphase. During metaphase, the mitotic spindle aligns all the captured and condensed sister chromatids along the equatorial plane, otherwise known as the metaphase plane, which exists midway between the two poles of the cell. The next step is known as the anaphase. During the anaphase, the cosine proteins holding the sister chromatids together degrade, causing the chromatids to separate at the centromere. 
During the anaphase, each chromatid, now referred to as a chromosome, is pulled together toward the centromeres, located at the opposite poles of the cell. This is done by moving the chromosomes through the microtubule structure formed by the mitotic spindle. The pulling of the microtubule structures away from each other also has the added effect of elongating the cell. Finally, during the telophase, the chromosomes arrive at the opposite poles of the elongated cell and begin to decondense. The elongated cell forms two sets of nuclear envelopes, which surround each set of chromosomes. Furthermore, the mitotic spindle disassembles into its constituent monomers, which will be used to support the structure of each daughter cell. Let's move on to cytokinesis. As we discussed before, the second portion of the mitotic phase, called cytokinesis, is the process in which the cell physically separates itself into two daughter cells. For animal cells, cytokinesis begins during the anaphase, where a ring of actin filaments, called the contractile ring, forms and tightens around the equatorial plane. This ring is pulled tighter and tighter by motor proteins to form a fissure known as the cleavage furrow until the two daughter cells completely separate from each other. 